Hello and welcome to Movie Recall, the show where we answer the questions you didn't know you had about your favorite movies. And we're going to talk about some new ones too. Later on in this episode, we're going to talk about Quentin Tarantino's new film, The Hateful Eight. But first, let's meet our panel. With me today on my right, we have comedian Philippe Danielides from the Boston Comedy Festival, Liz Barrett host of her own weekly comedy show, Mike Shop NYC, Ashley Vorsanger, and from somewhere on Long Island, Mr. John Carney. <laughs> Guys, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with the recent loss of Alan Rickman, I thought I'd just start out by asking everyone, what's your favorite uh, Alan Rickman moment or scene or anything? Uh, when he flashed his uh, Ken doll package in Dogma. <laughs> <laughs> I was young, I was struggling, I was at a time in my life where your puberty hadn't quite hit. It, it just made me feel better about where I was <laughs> Fair enough. developmentally. Fair enough. Anyone else have any? Well, I watch Love Actually every holiday season. Mm. It's a must, guys. It's, it's a, a must. So, and I do love his character in that, even though, you know, he's, mm, you know, wanting to boink the lady person. But I, but I think my favorite moment though, is when he reveals in Die Hard that he knows who John McClane really, Mr. Officer John McClane of the New York Police Department. Like every time, every time it gets me chills. I just love it. I love it. So sneaky. So in Love Actually, did he, did he actually have an affair? Did he just buy a necklace and that ruined It was more an emotional, Mm. almost... Um. Not don't, appropriate situation. All right, don't 100% quote me on this, but I am like 90% sure that I read an interview relatively recently with, I think, the lady who wrote the screenplay or wrote the mm-hmm. book or directed the movie, something like that. And she uh, said, yes, it was consummated. <gasps> really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't Alan. clear at all. I know. Alan, yeah. But she, well, yeah. That is news to me. Yeah. I know, it was yeah. very sad. And that also is my That's favorite Alan Rickman movie. He, and I also felt like I couldn't use it as my favorite moment because he's kind of a jerk. So yeah. I'm just going with all of Snape. Oh, Just yeah. all, every, okay. all of okay. Snape. I think okay. that's kind of my favorite. But wow. in honor uh, of Alan, Alan Rickman, our first question in the quiz tonight is going to be about his first movie. Oh, so, God. Is there a buzzer? Whoa, so <laughs> who was the first person to be offered the role of John McClane in Die Hard? Alan Rickman. Harrison Ford. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> uh, partial Ford. credit. Ooh, I, oh, gosh, I'm stumped. Harrison's cousin. I don't, <laughs> where are we going? I don't get it. What's going on? So, partial Mel credit. Gibson. Sly Stallone. Good one. Also, partial credit. You guys are tied now. I don't know. Partial like, credit because they're both like a quarter white of a point. He would be white. Well, like, well, so, I didn't know we were keeping score. It, tur- it turns out that, uh, so Die Hard is based on a book, which is a sequel to another book of which there was a movie made in the 60s, starring Frank Sinatra. And as part of that deal, if a sequel were ever made, Frank had to be given the right of first refusal. Stop it! So Stop in 1988, it. this is true, when they made Die Hard in 1988, they offered the role to 73-year-old Frank Sinatra, <laughs> who turned oh, it down. Oh, you so much better. Oh my God. <laughs> Come on, he did it his way? Come on. <laughs> so he turned it down, and then they offered it to Arnold Schwarzenegger, thinking, oh. thinking he could rework it as a sequel to Commando. What? Wasn't Commando in the jungle? In the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's where it starts, jungle. yeah. Okay. And then it goes to like Mexico. Why were we getting partial credit for Harrison uh, well, Stallone? Because, <laughs> because after uh, Schwarzenegger turned it down, they offered it to Sylvester Stallone, Harrison Ford, Don Johnson, Richard Gere, Burt Reynolds, and Clint Eastwood all turned it down. Oh, wow, my Bruce God, Rillis. Burt Reynolds in this role would have been absolutely phenomenal, especially if he had done it, like, as the character from Smoking the Bandit. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. It would have been amazing. <laughs> that high wine Chomping laugh the gum. over there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What would that do to Bruce Willis, uh, just emotionally, though? His confidence level <laughs> coming in, like, the- <laughs> Because he's Maybe. he's pretty badass. He goes in with some with some serious confidence. Maybe that's why he did such a good job that would, because he that would knew wound he me. was well, like ninety seventh. Oh my god, I would have loved I, I, Don this Johnson. This is dating me a little bit, but I remember everyone everyone hated him uh, after he was doing moonlighting, moonlighting, and they thought he sucked and was a dick. So and that's all he had done. And they said that apparently <laughs> it took him a while. Too. They were halfway through shooting before they figured out the the core of his character was that he was a man who didn't like himself very much. Mm. And they apparently they went back and they reshot some stuff. 
like banging his head against the wall. That was a reshoot after they said, oh, this is who it is. It's a struggle. It's yeah. the struggle, the inner See, turmoil. I get it. That is deep. Because we are talking about Alan Rickman, just one more quick thing about Die Hard uh, that I think is, is, is fascinating. They, uh, you know, the uh, spoiler alert, the death scene, right, where he, uh, you know, falls from the skyscraper and they uh, they shot it, you know, uh, it's close up from, from up above and he's looking up into the camera and he drops and you see this look of abject fear and horror. So apparently the way they shot that is they had him hooked up to a harness and they told him, we're going to go three, two, one, drop. And on drop, we're going to let you go. Okay? But they thought it would be like a, a fun goof to go three, two, drop. And so they dropped him one count early. And when you watch the movie, the look of abject terror is not so much Hans Gruber as it is Alan Rickman literally thinking he's about to die. Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh. That's the way you do it, because then you don't. Then you get the real, the, the real, real reaction. reaction. You don't get the anticipated and, yeah, you know, like... See, I don't actually respect him as much as an actor anymore because I thought that was acting. I mean, yeah. that was... It, it wasn't. doesn't say much about what they thought of his <laughs> chops, yeah. I guess. Yeah. The man is dead. Have he, some respect, He Jim. probably can't pull him. it off. It's the yeah, people. Yeah. Maybe they knew he could handle it. Yeah. Maybe it was a they nice knew he had thing a they ticker, did. Put him, right? Right. They made his career. They did. So, question the second. Oh, boy. What Star Wars character did Michael Jackson almost play? Oh, I just read about this. R2-D2. C-3PO. <laughs> oh, um. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Was it Lando Calrissian? That's it. Shut up. What? That's it. I got- no. Oh, what? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All those so- years of, ro- of reading EW paid off. Oh, <laughs> it was a Star Wars question. A girl. I mean, stop. I know, I know. So I'm- what's it, what did you, what? You said you read something? What? Yeah, I a read. A Star Wars question, I read. a girl? That I sounded read. like part of the story. <laughs> Like well, pa- answering the question so, was really all uh, I could last, do. Last <laughs> week, I thought that there was, was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> last week, uh, there's an interview that was published uh, with Ahmed Best, the guy who uh, played Jar Jar Binks. And he tells a story, right? He says that uh, one night he went out to a Michael Jackson concert with George Lucas and Natalie Portman. And they went backstage to meet like Michael. Like you do. Like yeah. you do, yeah. sure. And Michael was kind of a dick, apparently. And so a little bit later, Ahmed says to George, he says... You know, was it a little chilly back there or, you know, was it just me? And George says, well, actually, Michael Jackson wanted to play Jar Jar. He actively oh. lobbied George Lucas to play he that was part. He was hurt. He wasn't mad. He was he just was hurt. He was lashing out. Oh, he felt God. like he'd been excluded. <laughs> he, and he, wanted he wanted to play, like, the worst Star Wars character ever. ever. And he was, well, this was by that? Character of course, that before. almost, like, tanked the franchise. Yeah. But, well, but he, <laughs> he wanted to do it differently. He wanted to do it with, like, prosthetics and makeup and, like, like thriller it up heart. and make it, like, a real thing. Did yeah. you just say thriller it up? I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes. Beat it, Jim. Oh, oh, God. I just. Um, but anyway, you should uh, you should check it out. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. It is worth it just to hear Jar Jar Binks do the monologue from Taken. Um, what was the subject of the first documentary, and what was it called? Ooh, obscure. Ever. 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 First. Period. The first documentary ever. It was about a trolley. <laughs> <laughs> I'll guess a train. Is there a difference? Wait a minute. No, that's like the cousin of the trolley. Oh, no, come on, but it's so on. different. That's the cousin. I will say the Civil War. <laughs> okay. Mm. I do- oh, gosh, I'm terrible at this. I failed. It, George it, it was, uh, so there's a movie from 1922 called Nanook of the North. Oh, um, Nanook. Santa. It's, oh, it's, stop it. You did not know it was Nanook of the I North. Did. Oh, I saw the movie. It's... It's a movie about an Eskimo. Yes, it yes. is. And I can his primitive that. Eskimo lifestyle. No, no, no. And he goes through and he he hunts walrus with spears and he builds an igloo and and he does all these Eskimo sort of sub-zero outback kind Netflix, of things. Netflix, you blew it. And so this, this guy, Robert Flaherty, uh, made this movie and he shot it. It took him two years. He shot it in 1914 and 1915. And then he brought it back to New York to edit it. And the thing about film stock back then uh, is it was flammable. It was made of different stuff. It was called nitrate stock, and it was actually highly flammable. You know the scene... <laughs> if you saw Inglorious Bastards, you knew that. You know the scene yeah, in Inglorious yeah. Bastards? Right, when, when they burn down the theater using film stock as kindling. Yeah. Like, that's legit. That's nitrate stock, right? So, point is, your boy dropped a cigarette on his movie and burned Ooh. the entire thing up. Do you think also maybe Nanook would have liked to know that there was some readily flammable material available? It's just cold. <laughs> 
He's like, I'm <laughs> searching for wood. It's fucking, fr- my house um, is ice. Oh. And you just got this like <laughs> fire tape that you're just like throwing around with? Like, just help a brother <laughs> out, man. I got some fire seal tape. blubber I need to cook. Yeah. Give me a break. I had to kill a bear to wear his skin so I don't <laughs> die. And you just got, that's it, magic <laughs> fire string. So, so Robert Flaherty was not a man easily deterred. And he went back and he shot the entire movie Stop again. It. He shot the entire thing again. And it came out in 1922 and it was a really big deal, right? Uh, but it was criticized. For you know, he shot it twice and basically staged the entire thing. So, but it turns out the second time, the second time. But it turns out he staged a lot of it the first time. Mm. As I mentioned, Nanook hunts walrus with spears. He builds igloos. He does all these things. But it turns out, Nanook owned a gun. He had a house. Oh no! And his name wasn't Nanook. No, oh, wow. his name. Your childhood now. It's like oh. modern reality TV. <laughs> it is. It's no. like that guy on the TV show no, no, no. who it's, who would be air vaxxed at the end of the night. It's, 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 it's like it's, the reality it's guy. It's Donald Trump's campaign. <laughs> Finally, someone no, said it. The guy, uh, <laughs> you know the guy on the TV show who uh, does the realities in the woods, but then at night he goes to like the luxury hotel? Oh, Bear Grylls. Oh, yeah. Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls is still pretty hardcore. He's okay. pretty oh, hardcore. Okay. He's pretty Bear- hardcore, he is. But he also has like 97 children and won't travel without them because I have I used to work Bear in a hotel. Grylls? Yeah, it's like this whole thing. He's a a fa- and he's a family man. And he's a family man. So. No, he's a fake. <laughs> Much like Nanook. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on record that Bear Grylls is a badass, but his show is fake. But that's thank you. Not, not, neither here nor there. I so think, how many takes did they do then for? Are are they like staged it. Like how many walruses had to die for the mix? <laughs> Take twenty, dude. I don't know, man. I think like, another walrus. I can't and, imagine going back. And just, like if I write an email and it deletes, I'm just like, oh well, we're done. But he went back and shot an entire movie in an Eskimo or like an Eskimo land again. I don't even. Like. Eskimo land being the. That's the official term. So that was the official first documentary. The official first documentary was that movie, and it was complete bullshit. Well, that is a far cry from modern documentaries. That's why they call it show business, kids. (laughs) You get back up there Mm -hmm. with the Waldworths. All right, well, that's it for the quiz. I am being told that it looks like Ashley is the winner. Ashley, congratulations. (laughs) You can can pick up your dinette set and your jet ski on the way out. Oh, so exciting. Uh, And speaking of Inglorious Bastards and I guess by the transitive property, Quentin Tarantino, let's go ahead and talk about The Hateful Eight. It's been out for about three weeks, so hopefully everybody has had a chance to see it. But if you haven't, fair warning, this will be a spoiler-filled review. Uh, And also, full disclosure, I am a Tarantino fan. I am indeed so much of a Tarantino fan that when people ask me what is your, who is your favorite filmmaker, I say the Coen brothers because Tarantino is like exempt from any mortal ranking system. Mm. So, wow. are you guys are, are you guys know. Know right now? <laughs> are you fans going in? I mean, I get what he's trying to do. It's just I'm not so into what he's doing. Not a fan. Not a fan. Uh it, it's movie. It's movie by movie. Uh, I would say. What? I I judge the movie, not the man. Oh, I gotcha, so gotcha, I watch gotcha, the gotcha. movie. Oh, so You're, deep. So I deep. judge the man, not the movie. It sounds like a line from uh, *Inglorious Bastards*. Well, when you say it like that. <laughs> yeah. So you're when you say it with a German <laughs> accent. I'm going to say it. <laughs> you guys, fans or no? I I I would say I'm a. All right, no, John. No, no. I'm a fan, but I'm kind of like Philippe, where like it's it's sure. movie to movie, but I would say fan. The way my mother used to describe Woody Allen, she was a big fan of his earlier funny movies. Not so much the after he started Which were which were his funny sex. movies? Yeah. Well, which were Quentin oh, Tarantino's funny movies. Well, but um, the point being that his uh, earlier sorry. movies were good. Yeah, it's an it. The latter movie is Say You Go. Let's, let's, yeah. The latter movies kind of have not been so. All right, well, that's perfect segue. I have these two reviews real short. Uh, the Observer wrote, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what they said, that it is probably Tarantino's best film in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the BBC <laughs> wrote an article entitled, Is the Hateful Eight Tarantino's Worst? So there's a little bit of a discrepancy. I... I happen to know that John has a pretty strong opinion, so I'm just going to turn it over to you to start. What do you think? This movie, sorry, Quentin, it sucked donkey balls. If I had a choice of going back to see in 70 millimeter 
this film. <laughs> or going and, and suckling a pair of meaty, nutty donkey balls, just getting in there and really, <laughs> I would rather do that then watch this again. You really, John, you really thought that through. This did is, you oh, just, I've thought about this. Did you just motorboat donkey balls on I my did. first I did, I motorboated show? them. I got in there, I enjoyed them, I relished them, I did everything I would do. Oh wait, so you liked the movie? No, 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 no. <laughs> if I had a choice. Let's be clear. Oh. Uh, Let's be clear. Okay. I thought that. Sounds like you donkey really man. love the donkey ball. <laughs> I, if, if I had a choice between donkey balls or this movie. Oh, I see. If you had only two choices, only I think two. is what you're trying to say. Right. There is no. Oh, there is no. Well, this actually, show is taken. Uh, let's a turn. do both. <laughs> let's do both again. We'll go, actually, we'll do it again. And we'll do both. And we'll then do a comparative kind of analysis. But all of you have to join me in this. All right. I enjoyed the film. <laughs> Really? I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's breathtaking in 70 millimeter, but there's an overture. It's three hours. There's a break in it, which I get. I get the whole thing, but uh, it's a lot. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. And he does it in 70 millimeter. Most of it takes place in a cabin. Yeah. I'm not sure why we know, needed 70 millimeters in a cabin. I, I, didn't, I, I, did, enjoy, I did enjoy it. Uh, it was a little long. I did enjoy it. I'll say a couple, a couple of things. One, I did not know that Channing Tatum was in it. When I saw his name, I spent the whole three hours being like, where is Channing? I love Channing. Is he going to come the out? Stripper part. He's going to be, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for him to show up the whole time. And then uh, the, the spoiler alert. Uh, where Samuel L. Jackson's character drags that naked white man through the oh, snow much. for the, a oh, the mouth rape for scene. a BJ. I, yeah, you can say it. I, I mean, I just I would think that like if I had power over someone, I'm like I'm gonna really use this moment to my advantage. Uh, that's not where I would take it. That's just not where I would take it. Well, you're I not mean, from, listen. You're not from Long Island. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it gets super bloody, which I know is Tarantino, but every time, at the end of every Quentin Tarantino movie, I'm like this, it's the blood not even watching yeah. the movie because I can't even take the blood. I can't. And I know he's trying to do it in a humorous manner because obviously when everyone's poisoned and is vomiting all over the cabin, that's supposed to be humorous, but it's too much. Was it supposed to be yeah, humorous? Is that what he was I going for? Like you have a different you sense of humor than I do. You don't think I that was funny that when was the blood? Very farcical. The yeah, way they it was were farcical. Them, like project. It seemed very. It seemed it, like that's slapstick what I'm saying. to me. I was like, Are "Thank you." you. Kidding? It seemed like <laughs> thank you slapstick to me. I, I, uh, I wouldn't say that I like hated the movie. I, I felt like I got my money's worth out of it. Certainly by the minutes alone. <laughs> I can't bring a snack and a blankie. Um, <laughs> baby Jesus, when it got to intermission and the lights went up, I was like, oh, good God, get me some nachos. What is happening? I mean, that was, I was it's true. like, I get it. Pee it's break. Quentin Tarantino. I, I get it. And then like the overture and then the freaking opening shot is like 97 minutes of a statue. Oh. I just, oh my God, with the, okay. And then, and then it was like, so you have these amazing actors, and I felt like basically they were wasted. There was no depth to any of these characters. There was no, they were just like kind of your standard cartoony sort of this no, person. I, I, think, I just, I, I, was, I think that Quentin gave them the direction I want you to look deep into the camera, deep into the camera and overact as much as you there was, possibly yeah. can. There was, and they did. I, I I, ended up wanting to know more about the people that had been murdered. I was more interested in the murdered people than, than, than the people that were alive. That's so like, funny. Was the haberdashery a whorehouse? That's what I thought. I know, I was like, what was going on? I were do. they selling drugs? What was happening? I I didn't, how did they get there? Did they buy the haberdashery? Did they build it? I don't know. Is mm -hmm. Sweet Dave gay? Is Are they a couple? I don't know. This is like interracial in the mountains. What's happening? It's very confusing. Was no one else very, curious? Why what, like, was the candy all the way up on the top? I don't what understand. About, what about Bob the Mexican? Was anyone else curious like what he looked like underneath the jacket? I'm like, is he Who fat? Is he skinny I he was wearing like, that big jacket really the Mexican? whole time don't be a fattest <laughs> don't be a fattest <laughs> i was curious i was, was neutral on it i wasn't saying it was bad i just wanted oh, to know oh yes what going. in your chiseled glory you oh, know what you're saying oh, oh, black is so very down. slimming uh, sometimes i Look couldn't at me. tell really? if he was who like was even that actor really <laughs> <laughs> who 
was it? The what? actor who played the Mexican. I don't know. I'm pretty yeah. sure he was not Mexican. I don't. I that also seemed very. I was like, is, is also, the character better, supposed to be pretending to be Mexican, or is just the actor pretending? He got he's Mexican? better playing the piano, like through the <laughs> song. You know, he started and it was like chopsticks. I'm like, oh, cabron, I can't do this. And then, and then as it built, he just his I don't know if his hands just like loosened up, but. He really just was flowing with it. He was flowing with You're it. You're channeling Adam Sandler. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, he just he just like he loosened up a little bit. He let his shoulders down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. It was a lot. A lot of lady punching. A lot of lady punching in this film. Can I? Even off screen, like, like the lady punching happened even before the cameras began. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, of, you're introduced with, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and well, I, Jennifer, and I, well, Jennifer Jason Lee deserves a smack. Ever since, you know, come on. The last movie she did. See, I Come on. think she I understand. He's he's very misogynistic. He does create these like great women characters, and then he punches them in the face. <laughs> so <laughs> it's sort of like, oh it's, look, it's yeah. a strong woman. <clears throat> you know, yeah. I mean, I don't get into yeah. it. You thought she was a strong woman, not just like a super racist, angry. We never got Skitty a whole woman. story. Oh, well, say it. Who knows what she was up yeah. to? Say it. I guess yeah. she was a gang member. I don't. I don't know why I put that in quotes. I'm not. Also, what about the horses? Is no one worried about the horses? Everyone died. Yeah. The horses, horses. are all just hanging out, and they're like, "I'm hungry. Is someone gonna come feed us soon?" <laughs> like, oh, I guess he's a little. How does this work? Bob's a little late, but he'll he'll be around. He's fine. It's fine. He's on Mexican time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then just. Mexican. Time. They just wait. That's a that's a whole other movie afterwards. Like Twelve hungry horses trapped in the barn next to the house. What's going on there? Volume two, here it comes. So it did get three Oscar nominations. I don't yeah. know if you what guys saw they? that. One is for uh, original score. After hours two, I really didn't care about like the music, the, any of it. I just wanted to get out, but I, <laughs> I was contractually that obligated. Was definitely so. a point where I, I mean, that was definitely a point where I felt like I was being held hostage yeah, for the movie. Yeah, Kidnapped I really by felt Quentin like Tarantino. Being held That's his next movie, <laughs> Kidnap, where we just look at a screen and they punch women in the face and everybody's head four comes hours. off. And it's four hours long and you have to go there and rent space in the theater. probably like a racial, the theater. racial issue going some on there. Oh, black, racial some black, issue. Some Hispanic. And then Samuel Jackson shows up, you know. I mean, Says he what a half dozen times. Yeah. Shoots himself, shoots some other people. I really don't like it in movies when guys get shot in the dick. Is that, am yeah. I the only one? That, That's, that was not. It's spoiler honest. alert. Yeah. I won't say who. <laughs> yeah. Normally I would someone agree with you, but in dick. this particular instance, I was praying for someone to shoot someone in the dick. Really? It's Please kinda, just shoot someone in the dick. It's kind of well, like watching a woman get hit in the face, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I enjoyed the film. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you should go see it. <laughs> Sometime, and, wait, let me play there. Let me, Sometimes a woman getting hit in the face makes perfect sense. You should never shoot a man in the dick. You just don't shoot him in the dick. You could kick him in the dick. You can make fun of his dick. You don't shoot him in the dick. It's just like when Quentin in Glorious Bastard shot the woman in the vagina. I would like to. Uh, I would like to just say so that all the men. Uh, at this stage are not grouped together. I'm not complicit <laughs> we didn't arrive in together. that statement. I just want to make that together. clear. But if you asked them if they want to get shot in the dick, they would say no. That's right. totally true. That's it for this episode of Movie Recall. Please click like and hit subscribe for more videos like this. <laughs> and indeed for more episodes of this show. I hope to do more of them. Uh, in fact, the next episode of The Timing Works Out is gonna be the new Coen Brothers movie, Hail Caesar, Ooh, which I am good. super excited for. Yay. So uh, look out for that. Uh, I want to thank my panel, everyone for coming, John Carney, Ashley Borsanger, Liz Barrett, and Philippe Danielitas. Thank you all for being here. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing more of them, check out the description below. We're going to have some links to some of their stuff. Uh, thank you again for watching. Later. Okay, and just sidebar, just, I know, but and I didn't want to say dick, but then he said it, and I was like, well, I'll bet you right. <laughs> but this, this really bothered me. In the whole, like, you know, way too long scene about Samuel L. Jackson awkwardly describing and making the white guy suck him. Um, 
completely unbelievable to me that he did not say the word dick one time. Like, with all the language in that film, he said Johnson, he said member. Like, he used every other word, and I just kept waiting. I'm like, it was just, it seems so stilted and weird. I'm like, why isn't he just saying dick? I think that's Quentin Tarantino thinking he's being funny. I was going to, I bet it's a Samuel Jackson thing. I bet he was like, I'm going to do this without saying dick. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what it is.